man. Here, join the intro. You so much, man. You are you are doing the intro, and yeah. if you if you fuck it up, yeah, uh, you can't fuck it up. Yeah, I know. Or or, or something bad will happen. Uh, you you die. To you to you eventually. The Mormon Church starts to disown you. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get you excommunicated. <laughs> All right, All right go crazy. This is your tell moment. Me you, tell me when you start. We already have. Like when? Uh, 30 no. seconds ago. But like why? What? Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna do it without you because you didn't fucking show up. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. No cap. All right, now. Horda. Blow them right, off their feet. Three. Two. Welcome back, you sons of bitches. Welcome to our episode. Oh my three. god, already insulting yeah, the audience. Insulting the, uh, Unbelievable. The Unbelievable. Wait, Try again. The Try again. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. What? All right, just, fine. just go. Just, just go, go. Just go. Go. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Sons of Liberty. We're back at you, uh, at you with episode. Wow! Three. Stuttering. Oh my God, Hor! I can't <laughs> believe you do this to the audience. Oh, I, I, try again. Go, go. I didn't. Oh, oh, oh John. Oh, oh, oh. No, sure. Guys, can you we're, believe it? We're having a gaff. Oh my God, we're John Fetterman. But more than that, in this episode, boys. Yeah. <laughs> please, please keep all that in. That was too good. <laughs> That's how we entice the viewers. Okay. Now, you see Hook, line, and sinker. Are mentally, you know, challenged here. All right, welcome mentally to challenged? I am not it. mentally challenged. My life I, is I actually say that very we are... easy. One of you guys is a furry, another one's a Destiny 2. Wow. Oh, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> Calling all Destiny 2 players mentally challenged, huh? <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, that's not a really outlandish statement to make. Well, yeah, you know. fair. Uh, there's the furries, but I mean, that's kind of right, though. So, I mean... Yeah, we should just <laughs> them. Anyways. Ah, no, 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 no. Um, I'm going to have to bleep that <laughs> yeah. out. We're gonna, the first 60 seconds we're of We're going to get recording. our fucking thing taken down again. Oh, boy. All right, all right. You know what? All right, okay. Welcome back to the Sons of Liberty podcast. Oh, Autism yeah, Central for your, uh, you know, Enjoyment. center-right takes on... Pretty much everything. Uh, I'm I'm the host with the not most King Chalice season two never coming out. I'm Kaika, a dirty D2 casual. I'm Sunny, the host with Hawkeye. the host. Ain't no Anyways, this to me, Meryl. Ain't no way. There's no way. No, I, I'm just <laughs> adding. No you, you didn't no include way. your full name, so I'm like, no, no. I, I got way. this. I got this. I got this. Yeah, yeah. Transition. So Joe Biden. Am I right? <laughs> Joe. Yeah. yeah fuck that, the brother. Transgender guy. Uh, Wait, yeah, what? Yeah. Wait. What? Well, what happened? Did I miss something? <laughs> is, is there Joe <laughs> Biden lore we haven't covered on the Sons of Liberty channel? <laughs> Anyone anyway, just lore? <laughs> that, actually, Joe uh, Biden is a video game dude. <laughs> bro, I'm, I'm a gamer. I can't help it. Uh, yeah, he's trans. Also, um, before we get into the topics, guys, it's the month of November, so you know, just it wish us a happy birthday. Month. It would have been spooky month, but we missed it uh, because of fuck that month. Nah, nah, nah. Spooky month fucking peak, bro. I still got the pumpkin on my desk. Okay. Hate that month. Spooky month. Spooky month is peak. Fuck that month. Both Fuck of you month. are completely and utterly mid. Well, listen to now. this. Listen to this, okay? All right, bad. It's November, which means it's the no, our birthday November. month. Oh That's hell yeah! Who. I was thinking of like no, not November, but yeah, sure. Which means we we, we all get a pass on. Our yeah, come on, let's let, let's be real. Nobody nobody plays no November. <laughs> no, no one plays. <laughs> no one plays. It should bring awareness to testicular cancer. What do you mean? Yeah. No Wait, plays? what? I've yeah, yeah, never yeah. heard somebody mention that. Like, yeah. never. Well, it's, you haven't been was, on the deep ends of the internet like Sonny Cockeye. Oh, uh, obviously. To make yeah. it for testicular cancer. Yeah, because, you know, that's where Sony oh, is yeah. most oh, of the time. Oh, oh my god, awareness. I'm, I'm so aware of this thing existing. It's like fucking, uh, what, the ALS ice bucket challenge? You, like, you, like pour fucking freezing <laughs> water on people to, like, like make them aware of ALS. ALS. It's like, you know, I did that. congrats, bro. Congrats. Now, because of you pouring freezing water on yourself, I know that a disease exists. <laughs> Groundbreaking! 
Like, I'm, just, in, a lot of the times, like when people are doing those challenges, no one actually knew what they were talking. Like when right? you looked at Fifty Cent's video of him calling out Floyd Mayweather, one of the most iconic videos ever, of him calling Floyd Mayweather, saying he would donate like half a million dollars to charity. If Floyd Mayweather would just read one page out of a Harry Potter book. Like that was all the talk, and no one else cared about whatever else we was talking about. So you know, in a, in a lot of ways, it did the opposite effect. You know. No, nah, but, um, but all I'm saying is, is, is when, are, when, are, when are we gonna have Black Lives Matter awareness month? That is true. I don't even know what ALS means. <laughs> like, what um, does that even? I, uh, I, 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 I forgot. I forgot. That, that's that, that's how forgore? effective. That's how effective Don't all of these is. quote unquote awareness campaigns is. A-L-S. You know what it is? I think at the end of the day, it's what? it's a bunch of people trying to stir up the pot and force other people to be like performatively not necessarily outraged, but that that's certainly yeah. like an aspect of it. Like get people to sort of like emote their support for current thing essentially. So. Like, yes. you know, if, if you want to pr- uh, promote, quote-unquote, awareness of something, what you really want to do is get a bunch of people riled up about that thing to enact some sort of social change. So, maybe it's more research for a certain disease. ALS is the example, but there's also, like, cancer and Alzheimer's, obviously. Um, I would argue those are generally good causes, but then it just gets kind of stupid. I'm not going to lie. It, like, it gets to the point where... You know, you, you got, like, some, like, <laughs> like, some disease with a name that is so long, you need an acronym to refer to it. I guess AIDS is technically under that designation. <laughs> um, Slaking! But, I mean, let's be real. If you're watching Sons of Liberty, you know what AIDS is. <laughs> Anyways! Yeah. Uh, I think we were t- supposed to be talking about AIDS. Joe Biden. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Biden. Got it. Oh, Joe well, no, nah, I shouldn't have said that. I should have said yeah. monkeypox. Oh, yeah, because that's the, the new thing on yeah, the block. Yeah, yeah. Like, everybody really going to get triggered at you for calling, like, monkeypox a gay disease? But, like... When it really is. But it literally like, is, though. <laughs> that one viewer had that stupid-ass comment, like, oh, it's not an STD. Bro, that person's retarded. Bro, that's cut all, yeah, that's 4K, actually true. literally two weeks later... Yeah, two no. weeks later, like CNBC, the, like one of the most left-leaning people or one of the most left-leaning news publications out there, was saying, "Oh yeah, it's it's pretty much only a gay disease." So you know, um, yeah, crazy. no, it's not just an STD; it's specifically a gay STD, <laughs> which is very interesting in my opinion. Dude, all I'm saying is, you know, the HIV/AIDS commercial is like saying, "Oh, if you take our drug, you you'll be like." under the radar with the disease right you always see gay couples in those fucking com- you never see straight <laughs> couples in those commercials that's for a reason because most people who have hiv aids nah, nah, are gay they know their base they know their base <laughs> that's what i'm saying it's, it's so it's just good marketing it's it's fine to admit that some diseases are limited to certain types of groups right. and i don't think that's a, a controversial especially take. when like you know at, at the end of the day right like the gay people living their lives, they do understand that there are going to be a lot of differences between that and, like, a straight relationship. And one of them just kind of naturally is susceptibility to certain types of STDs or diseases that kind of crop up in those kind of communities. Especially because, you know, this this is, like, this is the point about, uh, like, you know, like, casual sex and hookup culture um, that kind of melds with the whole queer LGBT thing is that because you can't get another man pregnant no twitter reddit you can't get another man pregnant no matter what you your emotions say all of twitter dude okay but like but, but I'm, I'm getting here right because you can't get another man pregnant right if if you fuck dude right i love i love saying that it's a fucking hobby um like if, you lay pipe yeah if, if you have sex with a dude. dude right there are absolutely zero like consequences involving pregnancy none zero so because of that it's a lot easier to get into that like casual sex hookup culture thing because birth control isn't you know a factor you know the possibility of having to get an abortion you know if you're satan you know is isn't like an issue uh right so it's different it's easier it's lower stakes and because of that um you know a lot more casual sex happens and because of that, a lot more diseases spread. That's just 
kind of the gay reality, you know, that, it, you know, all this, all this casual sex is, this isn't like, AIDS isn't spreading because of monogamous gay couples. It's yeah. just not. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, like sort of the idea of fighting for gay marriage because, you know, gay people just want to live a quiet, you know, reserved, just two person life, right? You know, I hear you and I support that. I really do. You know, I don't even know where I fall on that spectrum, but it's probably closer to that than straight, right? So I, I'm with you all there. But then, you know, you, you look at what actual gay people are doing, and it's not that. It's. Like, it's the hookup culture shit. And to be fair, plenty of straight people are doing that too, especially nowadays. Again, you know, it's it's not just a gay thing. But you combine that with the absolute lack of accountability, and that's how you get, you know, super spreader STDs like HIV, like monkeypox. You know, it, it, it's, it's not very hard to put the pieces together. And, you know, it's kind of astonishing to believe that you could be called homophobic for pointing that out. Like, yeah. I don't know. Aren't you guys the scientists? You know, like like the, like the science worshippers, you know, especially like with COVID, you know, whenever like Fauci says something, it's like, it's the science. Science is The settled. science TM. <laughs> right? Oh <my> God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, much. yeah, so that, that's, that's the gay stuff. Um, the gay, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, wait, more gay stuff, Joe Biden. Wait, what? Oh my god. There is so much hidden Joe Biden lore here. I know. Speaking, speaking of Joe Biden lore, please, Kaiga, take it away. Alright, so there's a couple topics about Joe Biden. The the reason why there might not be as many as, I don't know, a, a podcast episode ago or two is because the midterms are coming up. And you might be wondering, wait, the midterms are coming up. Doesn't that mean the party that he is associated with will want to take him on the campaign trail so they could gather more support? Nope. Because Joe Biden's approval numbers are in the fucking gutter. All right. Yeah, he is right. a fucking donkey. So no one wants to bring him out. And every time they do, Wait, hold the on. whole crowd. He's a donkey. Yeah. Isn't that like good though? Because he's I mean, I... a Democrat. Funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> funny. Uh huh. <laughs> You not, you, something not so funny is what he said so he was on the campaign trail oh, no. or he was making a speech whatever it is and he misspoke he said quote we don't settle our differences in America with a riot <laughs> we settle them the we settle them peacefully at the battle box I mean <laughs> ballot box so um the battle box <laughs> no way so I'm highlighting the clip it's <laughs> <laughs> We don't settle our differences in America with a riot, a mob, or a bullet, or a hammer. We settle them peaceably at the battle at the battle box, the ballot box. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, it, it, it's almost kind of getting old because it's like, oh my God, Biden is out of touch. Who, who knew that? You know, we're, we're almost kind of like a broken record. We're saying the same things every day, every day, in and out. It's like, you know, we don't settle our differences in America with a riot two years ago, right? Like, yeah. honestly, this this stuff writes itself. I mean, you know, at some point it's like, does anybody check up to make sure that, you know, what Biden says is even remotely based on any type of practice by the government or otherwise yeah at all <laughs> you know we sound like a broken record but this next one's actually important okay right, yeah go ahead joe biden was talking about iraq and he's using that as leverage against veteran or not against but to to gain leverage with veterans to gain their support and whatever sounds right so he keeps on making this repeated lie this is not the first time he's done this um, that his son, his son died in Iraq. Sometimes he'll claim that his son died in, like, fire pits or whatever, but his son died due to brain cancer, and, you know, you can make the argument that... Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, so he had a son in the military, his son left the military, and then later in his life he we're, died to brain cancer. We're not talking about Hunter, right? We're talking about... No, his other son, Biden. Bo Biden, Bo Biden, yeah. Bo? 
Yeah, he had a son named Bo Biden. He died oh. right before the oops, the twenty sixteen election. Oh damn. Really? Yeah. So, um anyways. Bo Biden, you know, the cancer that he got might have been as a result due to the war in Iraq, but there is definitely no evidence to suggest that and for him to you know, to say that with such certainty, like it is a fact, is actually quite disgusting. Yeah. So we'll play that clip here, and you, he's just lying through his teeth here. Oh, no, but before we play the clip, I, I have to, like, put here, right, that Twitter uh -huh. put in a built-in fact check to debunk it. Uh, Disclose TV didn't quote the end of the clip where President Biden says, quote-unquote, because of it, you know, parentheses Iraq, he died. The president believes his son's cancer was a result of burn pits in Iraq. Context, yeah, there's no support for that. Context is written by people who use Twitter and appears when rated helpful by others. That's the key word. It only appears when other people rate it as quote-unquote helpful. So, if, if a bunch of people... You know, didn't find it helpful, wink, wink. <laughs> you wouldn't see the context. Just saying, you know, that's there. This uh, is, by the way, the yeah. most use useless context ever. Because it's this doesn't derail what he was saying anyways. I mean, he's still lying, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, so you guys could listen to it. And they talk about inflation. You know, we're dealing with it for a whole second... Inflation is a worldwide problem right now because of a war in Iraq and the impact on oil and what Russia's doing. I mean, excuse me, the war in, in Ukraine. And uh, I think in Iraq because that's where my son died. The, uh, because he died. The, uh, but the By the way, can I just say, um, I've noticed that as his presidency has continued, his sort of old man cadence to his voice has only grown. Yeah. You know, like, like rapidly grown. Uh, he, you know, he almost just kind of seems like he's not there. Uh, like every, like every time he says something, you know, it, it's, 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 it's almost, it's hushed, you know, it's, qu it's quieter. It's more subdued. It's, it's rougher. Well, yeah. You have to understand something, right? Joe Biden is a very old guy and the presidency is, a, it, it's, it takes a toll on you. So when you put this fucking eight-year-old guy in the office, I mean, what do you expect? With dementia? What? Yeah. <laughs> With probably a, a case of either dementia or some other disease that is affecting his cognitive ability. So yeah. it's actually quite predictable. And it's, it's almost sad looking at his deterioration. It is. It actually is. I would, yeah. I would feel a lot more pity for him if he wasn't the president of the United States and he didn't yeah. have direct control over all of our lives. Just saying. But... <laughs> Wait for the pity in the next topic, all right? It's, all right it gets right, even bad. worse. All right, all right bad. but then let's continue with the clip. Bullshit. I'm thinking about Iraq because that's where my son died. You're thinking about Iraq because the Iraqi war, right? The 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 the, the twenty long twenty year long quagmire that the, that the U.S. engaged in was probably one of the most politically relevant things in your career. And now that you're actually in president, your, your, your life is slipping away at you. You're kind of like all the details are meshing together. So when you think war, you think Iraq. It's not because your son died there. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean, but that would be a really weird logical leap to make, <sighs> especially when he, you know, didn't die in Iraq. Tony, man, this is just... It's so obvious, man, that he's such his his abilities declining. It's it's so obvious. Yeah. No. You know what? Like, I, like I'm, I'm I'm trying to make a point here, but at so at some point, it's like you you kind of almost can't help but feel bad for the guy. Like, yeah. He he's basically like you know a puppet up there, just kind of <laughs> doing whatever everybody else tells him to do. You know, everybody's you know everybody before uh, in the last podcast episode. You know, I was talking about Dark Brandon, right? But I almost kind of wish Dark Brandon would happen in a way, because then at least he would be more cognizant, more aware, and actually in control of his own term. 
of his own presidency. If that yeah. makes sense. Like, like obviously, I don't want Dark Brandon to actually happen because that would probably mean some type of overreach in government tyranny. Or, I mean, more than already exists. But, like, it would be nice to have a Joe Biden presidency where Joe Biden was actually the president instead of, you know, the the corpse suit that is currently occupying the White House. And can I just say, before, you know, of course the obvious comparison is, you know, Republicans are hating on Biden religiously just like how the, the leftists hated on Trump. You're, you're basically the same thing. But here's the thing. Nobody thinks about Trump and thinks to themselves, I wonder what a Trump presidency without, like, you know, sort of his... Like, like, let's say, for example, the Trump equivalent was like, like, what if Trump wasn't, like, absolutely soaking in money? Or what if, you know, I don't know, I guess there isn't really, like, a lot of good comparisons, because Biden's situation is so absolutely unique in, frankly, all of the worst ways. I can't think of any comparisons to the Trump situation. I am genuinely curious to see what, like... If Biden had full control over his mind and his body and his powers, what the president presidency would actually be like. If it would be better, if it would be worse. But I'll never know. Because he's not really even all there. Yeah. It's unfortunate to see. Sonny Hawkeye, yeah. what, what's your take on the living Our country's since? fucked. All right. <laughs> all right, our country's been fucked. I said this every episode. Like, yes, okay, yes. Your son's passing... Very sorry to hear. Obviously, it was back in 2016, as Kaika mentioned. Yeah, but that never really like, goes away. But to use it as a bargaining chip to yeah, try to, it's, like... it's weird. It, uh, it get feels the veterans, manipulative. Like, I think, but the thing about it, right? It was... I don't know. It's, I blame Biden because, I like, get it, Iraq, bad. We hmm. also have to realize we also left it bad. We gave him all a bunch of weapons... A uh, bunch of our military technology, and guess whose fault that is, Biden. So why would the veterans who served I like during the Iraqi War want to vote for him anyways? Yeah, he made the situation yeah. so much worse. And you know, um, it, it's it's actually kind of it's a good question because it's like, you know, I think a lot of Dems take for granted that they have majority support from the plebs from the normies, from the normal people, they, they take that for granted because if they were to actually admit to themselves that they're not, like, you know, counterculture, they're not, like, hip with the kids, if they were to admit to, to themselves that a lot of people are actually considering the other side of, the other wing of politics, especially after social justice and feminism has kind of shown us where their politics eventually leads, which is, of course, Marxist theory, um, they can't accept it. I don't think they can. And honestly, it's understandable. Like, it's really hard when you perceive other people acting in a completely alien way to your own values, and then when you realize that it's not all them, and it also might not always be you. It's just you have different values, and you act differently because of those values. Um, I, th I think that this is the difference that separates the Republicans and the Democrats, at least definitely now, because the Republicans did kind of used to do this, but, uh, you know, paradigm shift, whatever. Um, the Democrats are completely incapable of accepting that. So they've turned to slanderous tactics, trying to, you know, d uh, defile anyone who moves makes any moves against their ultimate utopia as, well, counter counter-revolutionary elements and reactionaries and Nazis slash fascists and racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic, etc, etc, etc. All these different labels ultimately uh, only serve the purpose of making your opposition look like um, ontologically evil people. Like, they're evil because they are, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and of course it requires absolutely zero cognizance other than uh, my team good, your team bad it's actually quite depressing if you think about it kinda yeah kinda
that's the world we live in. You know, this is actually a good segue um, into our next topic because... I love Demo- segues. Yeah, yeah, Democrats are actually be- becoming very politically, politically tribal, excuse me. No, they've when it comes to the... Well. Yeah, but this is, from what I've seen in the past couple of years, this is probably one of the worst examples I've seen oh, in a oh, while. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so there's this guy named John Fetterman. We talked about him in the previous podcast. He's running a campaign in Pennsylvania to become the next senator. And his opponent is called Mehmet Oz, or Dr. Oz, as known on TV. Um, And it's a pretty competitive race, but they recently had a debate. And I just want to point this out. Joe Biden endorsed John Fetterman, and I just want to make this clear before we get into the topic. Joe Biden said, and I quote, "Um, he's my kind of guy. That's, you know, that gives you a little bit of context of what, what is to come, all right, in terms of his cognitive ability. Um, so let, let's let's look at this first clip from the debate. And you guys tell me, is John Fetterman someone who is mentally fit and ready to become the senator of Pennsylvania? I do want to clarify something. You're saying tonight that you support fracking, that you've always supported fracking, but there is that 2018 interview that you said, quote, I don't support fracking at all. So how do you square the two? Oh, uh, I, I, I do support fracking and I don't, I don't, I support fracking and I stand and I do support fracking. <laughs> He didn't say anything. He was like, uh, I do support fracking, and uh, I do support fracking. I swear to God. What is... Bro, are we in the Matrix? Is, uh, is we'll tell you like what's happening. Simulation right. breaking shit going on? Alright, you think that's bad, right? Oh, it's plenty bad. Alright, it gets worse. Okay, go to the next clip. It's, and start at 138. Mr. Fetterman, I will allow a 15 second rebuttal. He has specifically said you have not paid your taxes and that you want to raise taxes on Americans. How do you respond? Uh, Absolutely. The Oz rule, of course, he's lying. It was helping two students 17 years ago to help them you know, buy their own homes. They they didn't pay the bills and it got her paid. And it has never been an issue in, in any of the campaign before. It was all about nonprofit. All right, thank you, Mr. Fetterman. Continuing with you, Mr. Fetterman, your opponent has criticized Democratic spending, as you heard. Has the Biden administration overspent? And if so, where do you think spending should be cut? You have 60 seconds. No, here's what I think we have to fight about inflation here right now. That's what we need to fight about inflation, you know, right now because it's a tax on working families, you know. And Dr. Oz can't possibly understand what that is like. You know, he has 10 gigantic mansions. You know, he, we, we must push back against corporate greed. We must make sure that we're also pushing back against price gouging as well, too. You know, we also be able to make more in Pennsylvania and make more in America. When he had a choice to make his merchandise, the Oz label is on, he made it all in China. You know, who can you believe that can fight against inflation and pushing back against corporate greed or somebody that is chosen working in China versus over American workers. All right, I will allow a 15 second rebuttal to his comments that you have been making things in China. Mr. Oz. Well, I've been trying to talk about policy issues with the people of Pennsylvania. As a doctor, I listen to their ideas and I want to talk about them. When John Fetterman brings up houses, the irony is he didn't pay for his own house. He got it for a dollar from his sister. And he hasn't been able to, to earn a living on his own. He's lived off his parents. So it, it, it doesn't, it's not a topic that we should be debating on the stage. We should be talking about crime and inflation, the issues that are hurting Pennsylvanians that they're talking about at their kitchen table. No, it, it, no, that, that's like, he, uh, he got his Pennsylvania right, house from his own inlays from a, a dollar. Mr. That's Fetterman, typical. we have to continue on. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage. All right, and you, you'll have fun. Uh, okay, yeah, let me, let me see this 138. Oh, here we go, here we go. All right. Oh, no. Okay, 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 okay. 136. 
Oh no. Oh no. What the fuck? Well, it sounds like me on the podcast, bro. What the hell? I swear to God, people really do be making like, f like Fallout 4 character creators with like, int two, uh, car zero. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, that's intelligence and charisma. <laughs> but there's still more. Just like it gets there, worse. Oh, there's more. That's, yeah, uh, with that clip, don't I, stop. I, I, <laughs> well, I, think I cut it off <laughs> early. Bro, he tries to talk by inflation. How it's bad, but he can't put it in his fucking words at all. Like this guy is no brain. He's he's tripping over himself. Okay, Bro, his so... suit's not even tailored to fit him. He looks like it's oversized as fuck. And you look at Oz, it's tailored to be fit for him. Okay. And you look at the all right. Let me let me made by his mother. Yeah, to yeah, be yeah, there. yeah. Go crazy. So if you guys want to know something, let me let me give you guys the context because. If I just showed you those clips, you'd be like, how the fuck is this guy in contention with Dr. Oz, right? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So John Fetterman, before the primary to choose the Democratic candidate for Senate, he had a stroke just a couple days before the primary. And something, um, when you have a stroke, right, your cognitive ability, it sort of decreases and you have uh, difficulty with auditory processing. Mm-hmm. And as such, John Fetterman, he's been on the campaign trail. He hasn't been talking for a bit. He's been saying, like, basically, you know, it's very taxing on me to to give all these speeches. And I do have some trouble with answering questions because of auditory processing issues. But hmm. I'm steadily improving, and this will definitely get better. And he gave a note from his doctor basically confirming that. Okay. So During the debate... completely understandable. I right, guess. right. It's completely under understandable. And during the debate... Fetterman, he required and requested closed captioning to be uh, presented to him because he literally cannot understand the words that are coming to him. Okay. Yeah. And then when he was questioned about this, like, you know, why are you using closed captioning? Is your condition going to be better? Can you release your full medical documents? All of them. And he said he would not release all of his medical documents, even though he's being transparent. So, this is uh, bringing a lot of issues right. to his campaign. Because without that information, how are voters to know for certain that John Fetterman will actually get better? Because when people have strokes, there are there is a chance that you will not fully recover. There is that chance, always. But John Fetterman is just saying, trust me, bro. So, you know... And, by the way, there, this debate was an hour long. Okay, I watched the full debate. Alright, and it was... Those were pretty bad clips, but there are... Those clips basically were happening every second he was talking. So, after looking at that, if John Fetterman <laughs> wins that race, I will shit my pants. Not even joking. That yeah. is some crazy shit. If that guy is able to win a Senate race in Pennsylvania, I am going to shit my pants because how is that even possible? Yo, yo, real quick, um, whether or not you shit your pants, uh, this this uh this this entire situation is, I don't know, it's very interesting because, on one hand, it does kind of feel like you know like bullying the disabled, which you know is obviously bad, but on the other hand, it's like, I don't know, you could just release the medical documents. You know, give voters you know a fair chance when it comes to knowing who they're going to be electing into power. I almost kind of feel like that's not even a courtesy. That should be like the quasi required, I guess. Because in my opinion, yeah. Let me just mention this quickly, okay? Yeah, go crazy. I don't even think this is John Fetterman's fault because he obviously is impaired or he he can't understand certain things, right? Yeah. This is entirely entirely on his team and the democratic party's faults sounds right Th this is almost elder abuse in my opinion uh, yeah but because it certainly wouldn't be the first time ex exactly this is so bad man like 
and you know what made this even worse? Huh. There was another candidate for Pennsylvania. Like, John Fetterman, I forgot the other guy. They were both competitive candidates. John Fetterman won out the primary, which basically means the Democratic Party chose him to be the Senate candidate, right? Yeah. He had the stroke before they chose him to be the Senate candidate for Bro, Pennsylvania. why? So they could have completely avoided John Fetterman and chose a different guy. But they chose yeah. to, the Democratic Party chose John Fetterman. So you can only blame them and his team for pushing him forward. You know, now that I think about it, you know, it, it does kind of make you, like, question. Why would the Democratic Party choose a disabled candidate? Hmm. It's very interesting. Because on one hand, like, you know, they're crippling themselves, literally and figuratively, right? By, you know, ch like choosing a candidate that is specifically impaired with basically how to respond to the press and how to respond to the people, right? But on the other hand, maybe it's, I don't know, like, uh, I, I could very easily see this being manipulated into some kind of, like, push for some, you know, diversity, equality, like, inclusion, woke thing, kind of like as a, as a blatant power play. Yeah. The other thing is, like, I don't know why it would be worth it. Because the thing about, uh, you know, like, uh, as compared to all of the other uh, isms, right? Uh, it goes for fat phobia, too, but especially, especially for ableism. Ableism is, um, there are actual differences between people who are abled and people who are disabled it's not like it is an immutable characteristic in that you can't change it but it's not like a superficial difference like the races or to a lesser extent the genders right um if you're if you're disabled um it's not like you would just want to stay disabled if if you if you could like you know cast a magic spell, right, to fix yourself, you would. Everybody would. Unless you're, like, self-sabotaging some kind of, like, you know, masochist, right? So, I, I've always thought that the, like, the ableism argument was very interesting and strange because it doesn't really work with progressive politics. Not really. It, it's just, it's not the same. So it's like, it could be a power play, but if it is a power play, it's not worth it. And I feel like even the Democrats would know that. Yeah, man. I mean, look, in my opinion, this will be a good indicator. <laughs> if John Fetterman loses this race, which I doubt he would win this race at this point, after his horrible performance. If John Fetterman wins this race, I really do believe... That Democrats are going to try their hardest to throw out Biden in a 2024 general election. Because if John Fetterman, right, who had this horrible performance because of his cognitive abilities, is doing this bad in the polls and he's doing not hor he's actually doing pretty bad. How is Joe Biden going to survive in two years? He's already horrible. Yeah. Right? He could barely speak a sentence out of his face hole. <laughs> so imagine what's going to happen in two years. Bro, bro. Back in, uh, back in April, Joe Biden was, you know, uh, leaving his, his podium, his pedestal, to go chase the Easter Bunny. Did I, did I <laughs> yeah, forget about, about that. the Easter Bunny? Yeah, yeah. That was a funny that, time. <laughs> that is the President of the United States in 2022. The Easter Bunny. Yeah. The so this President is... in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> This is basically, like, a Joe Biden presidency light run. Like, you know those <laughs> right? apps that say, like, light because they're, like, free, but they don't have all the in-game purchases or whatever? This is <laughs> yeah. basically a Joe Biden 2024 run, but light. <laughs> That's Look, exactly what is, it right, is. Um, I think Joe Biden and his administration might want to consider running him again, even though they said they wouldn't when they went in their turn. They are like, I'm just going to be a one-term one -term president, right? But... Yeah. I think the larger Democrat Party realizes 
that Joe Biden was actually more like kind of a compromise candidate. I mean, not mm-hmm. entirely because their definition of compromise is, you know, like kind of like their definition of unity, which is just submit to our will or else kind of thing. Right. Uh, but, yeah. but uh, regardless, he was still kind of a compromise in that, you know, he didn't have a lot of diversity points, you know, old white guy. Right. Um, he didn't have a lot of appeal to his base. Think, you know, uh, Biden bros versus Bernie bros kind of thing. Yeah. And generally he was uh, very uh, d- divisive because leftists hated him. Rightists obviously hated him. Plenty of centrists hated him. The only people who really liked Biden were establishment neolibs. And apparently there were enough of them to get him elected. I don't know. Honestly, yeah, I think a lot of sure. people just kind of hated him less than they hated Trump. Yeah. And so they elected him for that reason. But I don't think that's going to work twice. I really don't. If Biden runs, I'm pretty sure Trump runs. And if Trump runs against Biden again... It's an easy game for Trump, I'll tell you that. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Because if you, if you compare the economies under both presidents, uh, the policies of both presidents... Trump is just objectively better. Even some leftists, if you push hard enough, will admit that Trump was actually kind of a better president than Biden. But anyways, I mean, yeah. Uh, so obviously, the smart move would be to not let him run, and plenty of uh, Democrats know that. But you know, his 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 base, his administration, is still like, you know, we, we Dude, could be, Biden. We try again. Joe Biden made it clear, He, I think in a recent report, because obviously after the John Fetterman debate, people were wondering, what's happening with Joe Biden? Is he actually going to run in 2024? He said, if he can run in 2024, he is going to run in 2024. Well, if he can. Beautiful yeah. wording. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like I'm not sure he's going to be alive in 2024. <laughs> you have to understand, by the time Joe Biden ends, if he gets a second term, and by the time he ends that second term, he's going to be 86 years old. Yeah. And the thing about that is, right, plenty of people, you know, if they're lucky, can live, you know, happy, fulfilling lives when they're 86, you know, assuming they don't have some type of, you know, neurodegenerative disease or, you know, any of the cancers or anything like that. Assuming they're generally healthy, you can live a pretty fine life at 86. But I don't think president at 86 makes a whole lot of sense you know like yeah like he he's well past the average age of death in the united states yeah just to like that's insane at this point so i mean honestly i almost kind of have to give him props for like spitting in the face of death like that (laughs) pretty much i mean Uh, but but you know again it's a lot harder to root for somebody when they're your president and they consistently make things worse for yeah. you you know anyways uh so yeah that's that's that uh do we have yep. any more uh clowning on uh biden for today that's it for me i mean all right then I guess... the immigrant thing? what the what the immigrant thing oh oh uh, yeah we didn't talk about that um, we, we can talk about it quickly. Sure. So, um, I was on Twitter scrolling right before the podcast. It caught my eye. Some guy with a drone caught about 800 illegal immigrants crossing into the United States border. <laughs> and they're being ex- escorted. So, um, you know, there's that. You guys love immigrants, right? Uh, you know, I love legal migrants. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, so legal. I, I, legal. I, I think um, like illegal. I think it's better to to divide it more linguistically. I don't think it's just legal and illegal immigrants. I think there's immigrants and then there's border hoppers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like border hoppers. Well, well like okay. I, I mean, they're know. not even I, I they're th- not even I hopping think... the border though. They're literally just walking and being escorted. So. Well, yeah, yeah, but, but it's it's that it's like. It's that general idea, anyway. Um, okay, here's the thing, right? Yeah. I think a a very, very small amount of border hopping 
is not only inevitable, but kind of, eh, who cares? But at the current rate that we're looking at right now, it is completely unacceptable. Yeah. You know, wanting to, you know, tighten our borders to make sure that this kind of thing, you know, maybe stops happening nearly as much. That's, I see a lot of people, you know, say that as like a far right, alt right take. How is that a far right take? Like, I, I don't know. I, look, it's not. I don't really. I don't really. I would. I don't know if I would consider myself a nationalist, right? Of, of, of any stripe. I personally, I don't really like. I have, you know, national pride. You know, like I'm happy that I'm an American, but it's always kind of under the assumption and, and pretense that it's because of what America has allowed me to be like giving me the freedom to live my own life but i wouldn't necessarily consider myself a nationalist i would i don't know if i would consider myself a patriot in a lot of ways i'm kind of just like i like america transactionally if that makes sense as soon as america stops being a safe haven for freedom and you know uh constitutional republic style democracy as soon as that stops my love of America also stops because it stops being that good of a country and it just starts being kind of a shithole like everywhere else. The good news is America sure. doesn't seem to be stopping that anytime soon, at least, you know, if the Democrats can't help it, right? But but that that's kind of my relationship. So I'm not a nationalist, all right? And the important part about this, I don't think being a nationalist is bad. I'm just not one, Right? Um, and so the thing about immigration, obviously, uh, you know, immigration is good. It's how you, it's how you grow a population. It's how you, you know, sort of bulk up the, the strength and labor force of a nation. It's how you introduce new cultures and ideas into the American mixing pot. Uh, you know, I've always believed that this was ultimately a culture of cultures, you know, America. Obviously, there's some Euro dominance, and I would argue that's actually kind of a good thing because we were originally, you know, a European uh, set of colonies. But that's not to downplay the the also the amount of cultures that have integrated into American society and American life, which is also a good thing. So to that end, no, I don't think immigration is bad. Legal immigration is good, actually, but. The, the rate of immigration that we are seeing right now, both legal and illegal, is just way too high. We've got too many people coming into the country, and I've, you know, I've been saying this, and a lot of other people have been saying this for years, but nobody wants to hear it. And hey, fair enough, nobody has to. But, like, seriously, this problem isn't just going to go away by calling everybody who talks about it racist. Like... I, I know this is the one thing that like you know like uh, I'm not a racist. That's what every that's what every racist says, right? Because you know like like they don't want to be outed as a racist apparently. But I'm not a racist. Like I'm not, right? I, obviously, I joke around on the podcast here, but like I genuinely couldn't give less of a fuck. I really couldn't. Yeah. Like you know I am actually colorblind, which apparently you know according to CRT is. Racist. racist. So I, guess, I guess I am racist by, it, by modern definitions. But. Never ending argument, by the way. That's the most circular argument probably in existence. Actually. Me. Yeah. Yeah, because like seeing differences in race is literally like it, it's how you get to racism. Like plain and simple. Simple yeah. as. Um, but yeah, so what I was was trying to get here with that is like you can be you can be colorblind, you can be not racist, and also recognize that there is an immigration problem in your country. And no, this mm -hmm. isn't some, like, bullshit, like, white replacement BS. Although, you know, frankly, there's, you know, a lot of, you know, media pushing white people to have less kids. That actually is true. But the rest of the theory is complete bogus. I know I don't think... You know, for being replaced, I don't think you know it's 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 the it's the Jews or it's the Mexicans or it's the blacks or anything, all right? It 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 just it doesn't make sense. There's no reason to empirically believe that. Just because I don't believe in the Great Replacement theory 
doesn't mean that I can't also believe, or that I can't believe that immigration needs to be limited to a country within a reasonable limit. If you asked a Republican, like what, 40, 60 years ago, they would tell you, we need more immigrants, not less. That's not because we've shifted to the radical right, as many you know modern day leftists will tell you. It's because the circumstances were different. We mm. needed immigrants then, in larger <clears throat> numbers. It's <clears throat> different now. We have enough. And frankly, I think the ultimate issue is, a lot of people come from countries like Mexico to escape the third world conditions of their own country instead of working to change and fix up their own, you know, their own country. Th th you know, they come to America instead of fixing up the place that they're trying to escape so bad. And I understand that that's, that's very easy for me to say, because I don't live in Mexico, I, you know, I don't, I don't have to fix that problem myself, but, you know, it really just kind of seems like, you know, sort of a band-aid solution to the problem, you know. You know, Mexico's going to shit, so everybody come up to America. It's like, you know, what happens to Mexico then? At the end of the day, you know, they either don't care or can't afford to care. And hey, that's understandable. But I don't know. I, I think I think that that's a problem that needs solving. And the solution is not bring everybody to America, flood the job market, and generally just kind of decrease the quality of life in America with the, like, over-flooding of people. Yeah. I mean, you know, I will say there, the new case for immigration might be the fact that our, um, our replacement rate is not high enough to sustain our population, so maybe we do need more immigration. Uh, but that is obviously a different yeah, that, issue for a different day. I, I mean, actually, that, that actually is a fair point. But the other thing is, like, um, that, that, that is a problem that is solved by two things. There's immigration, but there's also, you know, having more kids. And that's yeah. that sort of gets into like the, you know, sort of the uh, child free don't have kids movement, and that I do think is actually like, actually genuinely toxic. I sort of briefly mentioned it before with the race angle, but even just in general, you know, don't have kids because climate change. Don't have kids because, uh, you know, uh, it's it's antisocial. Very weird arguments. Um, don't have kids because. Uh, it's easier not to. You'll have a more fulfilled life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, it's it's a lot of circular logic to basically justify people not continuing the human species, and it's sad. But maybe that's a topic for another day. Yeah. Oh wow! All right, King Chow ran over. What do you guys think of all that? Agreed to some degree. <laughs> I think we should go to the next topic. Oh, God, yeah, we, yeah, we spent a lot of time. Right, okay, yeah, oh, it's 50 minutes in the recording. Let's see here. 50? Ooh, Stadia. Let's, you know what? Th this will be quick. This will be quick. Let, let's talk about Stadia. All right, let's talk about Stadia. So, yep. th this is actually really easy. All right. Google. Everybody knows Google. Everybody loves Google. I have, I have Google Phone. Hi, Google Phone. Please stop recording my audio and sending it to Google for your AI machine learning algorithm. Please. But anyways, so Stadia. So, uh, for those who don't know, the, fucking somehow, um, Google Stadia was launched uh, three years ago uh, as a cloud gaming uh, platform to allow people to basically play games anywhere. Actually, Kaika used to have Stadia. So how I about still do? You, well, you you will for a while. Uh, tell us uh, your experience with Stadia. Hey man, I mean Stadia is actually not a bad platform to play games on if you travel a lot, or if you're just too poor to afford like you a know, PC. You, you were supposed to say that it's garbage. No, it's actually not bad. I, no, I actually enjoy the service. No, what, what about the latency? The, the lag? <laughs> yeah, but that could be solved if you use uh, Ethernet cord, in oh, my oh, opinion. Okay, okay, fine, I guess. But, 
like okay, hear me out, right? Um, it, it's in Stadia, right? The way that they yeah. the, the way that they compromise or for some lag for optimizing is that they'll actually read player inputs with machine learning, so the game will literally play itself. I'm not gonna lie, I pl I used Stadia a lot. I never noticed that if that was the case. Okay, you um, know what? but if it was. You you I'm sorry. Are, you are not pushing my narrative, <laughs> and therefore uh, your voice is not needing to be heard. Uh, you are you are clearly <laughs> suffering from Stadia privilege. Sorry, I'll meet myself. <laughs> there we go. Much better. Okay, so uh, here is the uh, sort of Chow government approved narrative. All right, Stadia was ass. Maybe maybe some people liked it, like this absolute loser of a man over here, but. <laughs> You know, frankly, it was not a good platform, all right? It, you can't just run a million servers on the other side of the planet and expect that to be enough infrastructure for people to play games on what is essentially nothing. It, it's a little dongle that connects to the internet to, you know, connect to the servers where the game is being played. It's just... The technology isn't there yet. The other thing is that the program was rushed it was, it was rushed because and we actually um yeah i overheard some uh insider news uh thanks uh, sfo again because you're basically my content source for all this shit now um yeah so apparently uh a lot of google employees uh basically can't get promotions unless they have launches right so if if they if they update a service if, if I fix bugs if they in general just kind of improve in a less noticeable way the programs that they already have um, they don't get promotions but if they can successfully launch something with the intention that it may never get updates that it may never get fixed that it may launch in a half broken and frankly non-functional state then, then they'll get promoted, like immediately. And so, because of that, I don't know. Uh, there's like there's like a graveyard of just dead Google projects because they sink all of this like inordinate amounts of money into like launches that never go anywhere. Google Stadia is the obvious you know answer, but think about like okay, the first one was like Google Plus, where they tried to be Facebook, and then there was like. Um, most people don't even know that Google Podcasts exist. Why does Google Podcasts exist? Because Google wants to be everything. Okay. YouTube Music was a separate platform like Spotify that used the YouTube database. So basically, you could listen to a YouTube video instead of watch it. And... Uh, why? What's the point of all of this fluff? The answer is launches. If you can get launches, you can get promoted. This completely and totally applied to Stadia. Stadia was Google's way of basically patting themselves in the back for being, you know, one of the first companies to introduce cloud gaming, you know, which of course was never going to work in the first place because the infrastructure is too demanding and we don't have fast enough internet for that to really be applicable unless you're you know, Kaika, <laughs> fucking rich kid, right? Um, just in general, the infrastructure was not there, but they don't care. They don't care how it plays. They don't care how it functions. They want launches. Launches get in, you know, they get promotions. And, you know, frankly, if you're a Google employee trying to move up in the world, I mean, yeah, who wouldn't take the free you know, spot up for launching something that basically doesn't work. That's why, you know, so many Google platforms are just, I don't know, except for the big ones, they basically get no updates. And when they do get updates, it's always in the form of an uh, overhaul to the design. Like how YouTube and Gmail got the rounded corners treatment. I don't, I, I don't know, have either of you guys noticed the rounded corners? Yeah. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. Yeah, and that, just the general layout change for a bunch of like Google platforms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those those um, 
those actually function very similar to launches because they can call it the new Gmail or the new YouTube. And that's somebody getting that's somebody getting a dub. That's somebody getting a promotion. Meanwhile, you have everybody else working on like bug fixes and stuff. Yeah, they go nowhere. <laughs> so all of this kind of is to say that Google Stadia was doomed, even if they didn't push leftist politics in the creation of their platform, such as. Gender neutral controllers. I remember this was kind of a thing back three years ago when it was introduced. So the colors are like white and green because green yeah. is supposedly a gender neutral color, I guess. Um, and uh, saying that cloud gaming is the future because it's more inclusive and social. You know, when when you buy a PS5, the only people who can play on your PS5 are people in your house. Maybe people who come over, maybe people who live with you, but when you're not using it, it's just sitting there, rotting, waiting to be used. That's the logic, anyway. With Google's innovative technology that they're shutting down, with Google's you know, innovative take on the gaming space, now... Instead of just lying dormant there, your technology can be used by other people who want to play games. Now, it's all it's all unified. It's games as a service now. Except, when you bought games on Stadia, you had to pay for the games. And the subscription service. It's not Netflix. It's not Netflix, it's not Amazon Prime Video, it's not Hulu, it's not HBO. It's not pay and you're done. It's pay and then pay again. Not to mention that plenty of people would just call you, you know, buzzword, buzzword, buzzword for saying anything negative about Stadia because it's inclusive, it's the future, it's got the correct politics, and that's all anybody actually cares about. All in all... I hate Stadia. I maybe in the future cloud gaming could work, but I don't know if Google is going to be the one to do it. And if they are, they should be focusing more on actually making this, this the product or service good, rather than only focusing on releases. In other words, Stadia is gone, and thank God for that. Anyways, what do you two think about the death of Stadia? You know, I'm pretty sad, but. By the time Stadia probably closes, I won't probably use it since um, I'll be living with my mom <laughs> while I'm attending college. Right now, my situation is I attend college, I have a dorm at college, so it's just more easy to use Stadia and play on Stadia than it is to bring my PC back home. So I guess it won't matter for me as much, but it's still a little disappointing Yeah. for me. Sony Hawkeye, got any input? Sunny Cockeye, please explain your position. I forgot my mic's muted. I was, I swear, I was talking the whole time. <laughs> I love Al. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, I do swear. you swear? Okay. Uh -huh. well, you interrupted me. Well, That's then, why I started uh -huh. laughing. All, all we have to do, all we have to do, is just play catch up. Say all of your points successively right now. No, but like about the stadia thing, like it's honestly like I having I actually had fun time you know playing with people from Stadia. Oh. And like play, I played Kaika. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We played uh, Trials. He sucked you, ass. I'm you are not world, pushing the narrative, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> no, it was fun. Like yeah, his thing like he was laggy, you know, sometimes, and he sucked. But you know, it we had fun. You know, it yeah. gave us another way of playing. You know, we even if you didn't. Have, PC could broke. All right, you know what? I th <laughs> I, th I think I think the viewers need to understand something. Uh, my co-hosts here suffer from some serious internet privilege. They both have <laughs> gigabit plus internet, and frankly, you know, especially for like post COVID, a lot of people just don't have access to that same kind of privilege that you that you two do. So maybe you'd be yeah. a little bit more considerate about the oppressed communities. Uh, you yeah, know, in our kids. that watch our videos that maybe fuck don't fuck have it. you know gigabit internet, <laughs> you just considered. Who? Who? Look, I will say asked. this. Who asked? Who cares about those kids, bro? Fuck them kids, bro. 
I will say this. I only have gigabit internet when I'm at college and my dorm. <laughs> when I go back home, I have like 100 to maybe 200 on a good day. Stop lying. Stop lying. Okay. Stop lying. Okay, no, but you, you, you don't understand, right? You still, at the end of the day, benefit from the power structure of gigabit internet. So that is true. Yeah, ha- having bad internet is uh, having low speeds plus institutional power, right? So I I can't have bad internet speeds because even though I may not have great reception, I don't have the institutional power that you know backs me with that that internet privilege. So. I just I I can't have bad internet, so, you know technically my internet is the same or better than yours, uh, cause I'm better and GG bozo. Yeah. But I I feel like I would be like so good at just bullshitting my way through essays in college, <laughs> lol. I wouldn't know cause I don't go to college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're an hour and four minutes in. Let's move on. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so Where Stadia... What the fuck? No, no, no. I don't know if we should... I don't know if we should talk about this next topic next. I feel like we should move on to the topic afterwards. But we could talk about it. You know what I mean? Uh, like, Dad, okay, Elon, well, we really just had a backspace. Oh, no, okay. Elon Musk, guys. Let's oh my god, Elon my favorite Musk. person on the entire earth. Oh my god, Elon. He, oh, he finally God. closed the deal, boys. Wait, what? Bro, he closed. He, he the deal owns Twitter, deal? bro. Oh, Twitter, he owns bro. Twitter, bro. bro. I swear, I do it. I do it. My my boy Elon came in bro. clutch, bro. And you, how, everybody bro. said. Everybody Wait. said Elon's a flaker. Elon's a flaker. He was never actually gonna buy Twitter, but I kept <laughs> out hope. I kept out hope <laughs> that the Poggers champion Keanu Reeves, Elon Musk, would buy Twitter and save us from the leftoids. I knew it. How I knew it was really good, bro. Like, he brought a sink into the headquarters. Oh, yeah. He, he made a tweet like, uh, I bought, or like, I'm entering the Twitter headquarters, let that sink in, and then he brought a sink into the Twitter headquarters. Bro, uh, why does, yeah, a fucking uh, shoe on head. Uh, made that joke like what I want to say like six. Uh, uh, don't worry about it. Um, Some free. Sh- yeah. They should all kill themselves. Pretty much. Uh, I yeah. mean, Sh- no, we love furries. Boy, sh- sh- shout out to my man. Uh, shout out to my man, Doctor Owozx Misato. If you know, you know. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> all right, let's just continue. All right. Also kill yourself. Uh, right, so uh, Elon Musk. Uh, Elon's right. of the Musk. Yeah, so apparently he bought Twitter. He really did it. I, again, I always believed in him, never doubted him for a second. I do belong to the Church of Elon Musk, but you know that's kind of auxiliary at this point, right? The Church of Elon Musk. Uh, you know, some people are going to take this actually seriously. And mean, there, some, like, I, CNN's going to write an article I saying, being, like, oh my god, I Elon Musk has a cult following serious. now. Are serious? I, you know, I would, I would be so down to join the Elon Musk cult. Uh, you, you can take this out of context. You can clip me. I don't care because I mean every word, right? A hundred percent, right? If if, oh Elon, if Elon Musk started a cult where you had to buy Tesla cars, you had to get the boring flamethrower, you had to go to space on the SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch launch rocket. Right? If you had to get the boring merch, if you had to take the tunnels underneath LA that will never be built, if you had to do all of those things to join, I would do it in a second. In a second. I can't wait for this article CNN's gonna write. I'm gonna, you know what, no, I'm gonna make this please, into a clip and tag please, CNN. Please, please. <laughs> I want to be CNN fodder. Come on, come and get me. Come and get me. I won't kneel. I will not kneel. I'm going to DM like a retarded fucking CNN you know reporter no, and they're going to take this seriously. Remember that fucking, that, that, that like 17 kid, 17 year old kid that CNN docks because he made a Trump gif, right? You yep. know what? They can't get me the same way because I got a VPN. <laughs> done. You're done. Bozo. Yeah, dude. I use fucking Opera GX's built in VPN. They're never going to catch me, dude. Bro, Opera GX? Don't you mean the browser for gamers? <laughs> 
<laughs> the PewDiePie browser. She, wait, what is? Wait, this is a browser for gamers? Yeah, Opera GX. Oh Whoa. my god, this is. Oh wait, uh, really? ha hashtag not not sponsored by Opera GX. <laughs> Oh, but That's hey, what thinks. but hey, Opera, you know, if you wanna wanna hit us up with sponsorship, you know, yeah, get get we'll get, get that channel, like trust. get that uh, that forty subscriber political YouTuber money, yeah. Please, Opera GX, we please, are begging you. Please, we are so desperate. We're only can you play us a rumble. Can you make us eleven dollars? Can you pay us eleven dollars a month so we could pay for Spotify? Okay, now hold on, eleven dollars each, because we all need our separate Spotify subscriptions. What? No, it's no, that's not what I mean. That's so we can put our content on fucking Spotify. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, oh no, sorry. Fee. I'm just trying to con you out of eleven dollars a month. I, no, we do not endorse that statement. Give me, give me. No, I, 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 I need to buy Discord Nitro again. <laughs> like a gamer, dude. Yeah, I'm a gamer, but I, I use Discord Nitro. With emphasis on gay, mer. No cap. No cap. All right. Me, me. Right. So Elon Musk. Oh my God. I... Yeah. Oh, so let's talk about some of the things that are, I guess, controversial with the acquisition. The first one being that Elon Musk wants to make the Twitter blue check mark a purchasable, uh, verification thing, wait. and that's sparking a lot of controversy because people wait, are like, oh, purchasable. Yeah. I mean. It already kind of is, though. Well, okay. Look at it like this. All right, Elon Musk. He initially offered uh, people to purchase it for twenty dollars a month. People are like, "That's Wait, way what? too expensive." And he was like, "Okay, I'm bringing it down to eight, and that's my final offer." All right. And there's what, means. what we have to our, we have we have to get our Twitter ver verified. Yeah, no. So, no <laughs> yeah. Okay, so serious thing, right? Okay, so offer yeah. GX. <laughs> I, I I give you I give you trade offer, alright? We we autistically mention you in every topic of every video going forward. In a really in a really like like obvious, like obviously sponsored and very not cool way. And in return, you give us enough money to get us blue for eight months. <laughs> yeah, eight eight dollars for eight months. So we can have the check mark and bully other check marks and get ratioed for it. This is, yeah, our, this I mean, is our dream. I actually don't mind this as many people would think. Like, yeah, no, I, I think I this don't is even, actually a benefit. Because, the thing, because the thing that nobody like considers is first of all, right? You know, it being a service makes a lot of sense. A lot of websites already kind of do this. Like, uh, like, like Metal Goals, Discord Nitro, right? Um, it's a very good way of uh, making sure that you're you because, you know, somebody trying to impersonate you would also have to pay the money, right? So, I don't know. I, I think uh, Elon Musk is ultimately trying to give more power to the people while also making Twitter profitable. Both of those things are ultimately, at the end of the day, good. As long as he doesn't start locking a bunch of big features behind it, like what Discord did, I think it'll be ultimately a good thing. The thing that most people who are complaining about this don't recognize is, one, we're not living in a communist hellscape, you still have to pay for things, and two, uh, and I think this is the bigger one, you kind of can't get verified unless, um, at, at the current moment, unless you do pay for it in much bigger amounts by basically getting somebody to do a news story on you and then get that news story be seen by Twitter staff and then have you become verified. So you already have to pay. Now you just have to pay way, way, way less, and it's direct. Yeah, in so some that's situations. Just kind of every day. Yeah, you have to pay like an agency to kind of talk to Twitter staff or whatever yeah, it is to gain we're, leverage. We're, we're talking like four digits. Yeah, so you know it's not a horrible thing in my opinion. Also, it actually rules out a lot of the spam accounts because if you're willing to pay eight bucks a month for Twitter. You, probably a legit service they're offering yeah exactly and the other so. thing is like um it would it would kind of show the difference between you know people who are kind of like you know like regulars in the site would probably look into paying for blue whereas um other accounts that are just kind of there you know just because you know maybe they don't know the check mark and that has a completely different meaning it just it makes sense it it makes sense this does have 
you know, the ability for abuse, but that doesn't make the idea of the system necessarily inherently bad. Yeah, I'll say this. For me personally, you know, with the amount of money I make, it's I'm not going to pay eight bucks for it. But, you know... I might. If, I mean, yeah, yeah, but... I won't. A lot of people won't, and yeah. ultimately it's a choice. And that's and fine. It, it should yeah. be a choice. It, you know, if, if you... Right now, if you don't have a verified check mark, it's because you're a pleb. It's because you're oh. one of the... It's, no, no, seriously. It's because you're one of the lower class in Twitter. But, True. but with this change, it's just going to be because you don't personally feel like $8 is worth having a meaningless check next to your name. And that's fine. Some people will want it. Some people won't. Either way, it's fine. It's fine, because it just gives more people po uh, more power to the people. And at the end of the day, that's what we all want. Because, nope. you know, frankly, right now, like, Twitter right now is almost kind of like feudalism with these, like, rigid classes. There's the journalism class, and there's just everybody else. But th this could be a welcome change. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm indoctrinated into the cult of Elon. But hey, you know, who am I to say? Yeah. Alright, so, Sonny, <laughs> th thoughts on the check mark? Honestly, I can't find it stupid. Like, Fair why enough. do you have to pay for that kind of thing? Like, I don't know. To be fair, he did mention that if you are, like, a public official or someone important in that type of sense, there will be a separate certification just so people know for sure that you are the person you are proclaiming to be. So I think this is a good uh, good way to get some revenue for Twitter in the long run anyways. Because Twitter is not profitable. No, and no. that should be one of Elon Musk's goal to make it profitable. Or at the very least, more profitable. Yeah, capitalism, fuck communism. Yeah, good. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Good, bro. Capitalism's good. All right. All right. Mike, it... Oh, it, it let me take is, care of this one. Yeah, you got, all this, right, you got right, this. Right. All you, all you. All right, so there's a congressional candidate in New York, in New York's 12th district, excuse me, named Mike Itkiss. He's running it as an independent... Itkiss. Yeah, it kiss. He's running as an independent, but he's basically a Democrat, and he doesn't want to run as a Democrat because, well, I think we understand why. Why? Considering what? the current he's, he's circumstances. Like, not nah, because he's like uh, he's hiding his power level. I, I know I'm kind yeah. of like doing the Vosh thing, where it's like uh, you, you don't actually believe what you say you believe. You're just lying. But honestly, like a lot of like independents are really just Democrats that don't really like the label because yep. you know they're afraid of being associated with people who get called out. For being, you know, trash. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so one of my Ickis's, um, I guess policies that he supports, or referendums, is sex work, and he supports it to oh such an boy. extent. Yeah, yeah. Get ready for this. He supports it to such an extent that he released a sex tape in which he was having sex with a porn star on Pornhub. I. <laughs> I okay. Listen to me, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a very complex opinion about this, because on one hand, you know, uh, this whole like sex work is real work thing, I do kind of agree with that, because I mean, yeah, you know, if people if people are you know paying for that service, then clearly, you know, it's it's there's there's a market behind that, and you know, fair enough. But on the other hand, uh, can you send me the link? <laughs> it's a straight it's it's straight okay. I uh I know what I said. Okay, well listen to this. Alright. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. Please right. don't clip that. Please don't <laughs> clip that. <laughs> Bro, right, I, right, actually, right. I do not want to see that. Listen to this, okay. Alright, yeah. So Mike it, it kiss. You could say he supports sex work or whatever, yeah. but to me, what this seems like is he is really old. What this seems like to oh, me is what? he wanted to get his freak on yep. at the age where he can't get any. And, um, you know, and, so that's what he course, did. you know, he's, like, probably, like, like, got some, like, perverted sentimentality. So he's like, hmm, I wonder, what if I uh, made this public? 
Yeah, yeah. You know, probably like, maybe some like humiliation thing. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Frankly, I'm not. I'm not interested in knowing what kind of weird like sexual thing he's got going on. But frankly, it's it. Okay, you know what? At the end of the day, we can go on and 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 on about you know what maybe why why he did this and you know where the link is. But at the end of the day, I'm porn hub. I can't help myself. I have to get a drop of that. Okay, but like, but. The, other- <laughs> <laughs> the crazy okay. part about this, by the way, is they did a little bit of floor or for, uh, excuse me, foreplay in the beginning. <laughs> so it was, it was really weird. Wait, wait, wait. How would you know? How would you because know? yeah, how well, would you know? Yeah, would you right, know? Right, let me let me tell you something. No, 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 no. That's us. That's Chad, us. All right, all right, let me not let me do, not dox someone. All right. So my roommate, he gave me a Twitter link, and that's what I'll say. Oh, <laughs> oh that means you watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Not, well, listen. Not your sus, bro. Right. Your sus. You guys want to know some information about the video? Oh, what? It was 13 minutes long. Okay. Okay. And the woman who he was having sex with, uh, I think she was like a Ukrainian woman, which is, I guess, I think he's trying to get brownie points with that. Nah, see, that's the thing. Right? That, that, that's what I was. That's what I was trying to get at before I fucking started dying of laughter at my own joke. Um, <laughs> this is clearly a power play. Right? Yeah, like, the, this entire thing is clearly just a virtue signal. Like, I support, also it's clout chasing. Well, well, yeah, but those are basically the same thing. If if uh-huh. you are, if you are proven to be virtuous, uh, you get clout for being virtuous. That's how that's kind of how leftism works generally. I mean, you know, until until the purity spiral gets you. But generally, like, I don't know. This was this was clearly just like a tactic to make himself seem artificially more important, and like it worked. Because, I mean, here we are talking about him, right? You know, because this shit's funny. But, yeah. uh, you know, frankly, um, I don't know. You can you can support sex work and also not publicly release a sex tape of you and a porn star. But you do that specifically so that you try and make yourself seem as noble and righteous as possible while also doing something so inflammatory that it will get a lot of attention. That is kind of the strategy of most politicians nowadays. They want to seem both like good people and like shockingly bad people or if not not bad but like you know. Enough to get attention. Yes exactly. And also unexpected. He got, he got free sex with a younger lady that he probably would have never gotten. Oh right? Well you know th- th- that's the other yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry, but Mike, it kiss, you're not getting any, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, have you guys seen this guy? Like, how he looks like? Uh, yeah. No, but I don't need to. I already know. He looks like if Johnny Sins was a 70 year old guy. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me put a picture of him. Wait, hold on. Wait, why do you know what Johnny Sins looks like? How do you not look? No, hey, what? Hey, yo, bruh. All right, that's hey, what he looks yo. like. How, where do you know Johnny Sins from, huh? Oh, my God, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, okay, you know, you know what's throwing it off? Okay, the chin is different. Everything else is the exact same. The fucking forehead. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh. So that's, that's <laughs> how people are getting you know fucking clicks on the internet nowadays uh, yeah yeah i mean he basically employed sure. the kim kardashian strategy well right because the thing oh is- and you know what you know what i'll see yeah, what else is funny about this what, what, hold up hold up what, what, what? he titled the porn hub uh video i completely forgot about this i'm looking on uh yeah yeah my like notes yeah, yeah, he titled yeah. it bucket list bonanza huh now here's the thing about that maybe that was just to make it a little less you know innocuous or a little more innocuous, but maybe, and just, just go with me here for a second, I'm going to be a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, what if that wasn't, like, entirely a power play? It probably was power play, at least to, like, an extent, but what if, what if his, his, like, his genuine bucket list, like, like, like the last thing <laughs> that, he, that he wanted to do in life was to, you know, be this, oh boy. be this politician, and then get some as as a seventy year old you know like uh uh you know independent uh, congressman right 
try try to try to get some and then make it make it a, a, a tape right and use that for political activism i mean it's incredibly unlikely but how do you know exactly how do you know though how do you kn- exactly there's no way to tell yeah uh so but i think obviously you know occam's racer would suggest this is probably just like oh my god look at how good i am look at how righteous i am i had sex with a porn star also i also got some pussy but like you know what i mean <laughs> oh well, yeah that too <laughs> like but, dude you know, i respect honestly, him i almost kind of feel like um and you know don't don't clip this and like call me sus or something but like <laughs> i almost kind of feel like it would have been a better virtue signal for it to be like a gay thing <laughs> for him to like a, like fuck the dude because then you could have also included like like the queer thing. Oh and my it, god, you're right. You, you, you got you got to stack the oppression points like a fucking <laughs> game of Jenga. <laughs> Dude, that would have been great. You know what? You're right, Mike. In case you didn't go far enough, all right. You should have had sex with a guy <laughs> or a tranny. Tranny, actually, trannies are a uh, guy. A tranny. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, the thing about like like the tranny, right? Is that that's almost too spicy because the thing is, right? <laughs> um, the, the <laughs> think about um uh, too spicy huh well okay well <laughs> i realized i might have worded that a little bit poorly <laughs> but like how but, spicy are we talking like jalapeno level spicy or ghost pepper spicy uh i'm thinking fucking bullet ant on the tongue spicy um now the, th- the thing about that is actually um, sunny cock guy what do you think how spicy is yeah that? no you, you, you you're, you're, you're the resident you're the resident mexican you, you would know this <laughs> <laughs> Why am I being Come on, to this? You, you are our diversity quota. Come on. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Like, honestly, this whole thing is kind of mad. I do kind of agree with Vincent in the fact that I don't think this is actual political play. I think this is actual fucking buck before uh, he dies. It, it could be either. Honestly, <laughs> it could be either. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> I think he was just trying to get some pussy. Well, you know, the thing is, right, um, the, the, like I'm saying is, if he actually did want to go for as many, like, points as possible, he would have slept with a dude. Look, <laughs> he would he would have gotten the monkey pox and gone on with his life. I'm just saying. He would have got AIDS, and then that would have been even better. <laughs> Real. Um... <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is how we move on to the next topic. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I think the next topic is the mi- 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 midterms. Oh, no. Yeah, everybody's so, talking uh, about the midterms, but let's see what's actually going on. Uh, so this is this next topic is just going to be a discussion on where Democrats stand in terms of their chances of winning the midterms, and it's not looking good. In all likelihood, Democrats are probably going to get shellacked. I don't see a possibility where Democrats don't lose serious footing in these races. And I think the problem with the Democrat strategy uh, this year round was the fact that they tried to use Roe v. Wade as a way to gain leverage on Republicans. Right. And they tried to use January 6th well, as a know, way to gain th- leverage. The thing about you know, January 6th is that it was... It was essentially nothing, you know, yeah. kinda, kinda nothing, right? So when they used it, it was purely ideologically based. So they were preaching to their own choir while essentially alienating anybody who even had a shred of a doubt, because they knew if they actually brought up that question, they would be called a uh, violent right-wing terrorist insurrectionist, right? Um, and then as for Roe v. Wade, that's a little bit better of a strategy because most people on the center are kind of like, yeah, abortion's fine. You know, whatever. To a degree, to a limit. You know, women's rights, that whole thing. Uh, just to be clear, I am not that. Uh, I believe we have gone uh, uh, over that uh, on a previous uh, podcast episode. Go watch our backlog, buddies. But uh, but basically, um, you know, Roe v. Wade is a little better to, you know, pander to, but you kind of have to play the optics game a little bit because, of course... Roe v. Wade wasn't actually banning abortion. It was just overruling the blanket federal allowing of abortion, which is the which is the crux of the issue, right? Um, so it, it sort of gave the power back to the states. Uh, and of course, you know, th- what, what Democrats, of course, hate is any power getting into smaller forms of government than the top-down federal stuff. Because, you know, it completely conflicts with their ideology. 
So, you know, they had to kind of blow it out of proportion. Some people saw through that. Plenty of people didn't. So Roe v. Wade is kind of effective. But generally, you know, they're not they're not looking great. Because, you know, when Democrats scream Roe v. Wade in Jan 6, Republicans scream inflation and, uh, you know, poor foreign policy. You know, you know, Republicans say, hey... You know, Biden has been completely incompetent in basically every challenge that's faced him. The recovery from COVID, you know, fairly incompetent. The uh, pulling out of Afghanistan, cripplingly incompetent. Inflation, the direct cause, or at least one of the direct causes. Um, the war in Ukraine, that one's a little more esoteric, because Russia was probably going to do that anyway. But his display of weakness probably didn't help. Generally, when you add all of these things up, it's like Biden was just kind of a really bad president in almost every way, and it was it's embarrassing for the Democrats, and they're trying to cover for that by bringing up other points that agitate their ideological base. And yeah. frankly, you know, a lot of Republicans are going off like <laughs> the Democrats are totally going to lose the midterms. I don't know what's going to happen in the midterms, but all I'm saying is most sensible people who look at what's going on would probably come to the realization, or at the very least, the suspicion that the Democrats uh, need a break to reorganize and, frankly, to get their priorities in order. I, you know, I, I can't speak for centrists, because, frankly, I am not one. I am a partisan. But, you know, if I was a centrist, that's what I would be thinking. Yeah, so to add on what Chow said, it's not an effective strategy because abortion or Roe v. Wade, although, you know, it was a controversial decision, right? Even the initial decision of Roe v. Wade and the repealing of that, it's not as important to people when their life savings are being eaten up by inflation, right? That's just, it's not comparable at all. The The percentage of people having abortions compared to the percentage of people that are getting their money fucked up is not comparable. And you see this reflective in all available polling data, 538, a very notorious polling um, powerhouse for leftists, even are saying Republicans, and this is of... You know, November 2nd, this is the day. They're saying Republicans are favored to win the House of Representatives 85 times in 100. All right, that's like, that's a huge fucking gap, man. The, the, the probability of Democrats actually retaining the majority is super unlikely. And I do think 538 is underestimating this. Because they're just predicting if they get the majority. I think 538 is actually underestimating Republicans picking up a lot of seats so that they're, you know, close to the super majority, which is kind of crazy. In the, in the Senate, I think their predictions are actually more reasonable. They say Republicans win 53 times in 100. Um, and that's because a lot of the Senate races are really competitive. And I was looking at the polling data, and obviously I looked to Pennsylvania because of John Fetterman's horrible debate. They put Fetterman winning in 55 times out of 100, man. That is so wrong. If I had to guess, it's probably really even, 50 to 50. Um, so you could just see where they're underestimating in a lot of polls. Fetterman is obviously not winning 55 times out of 100. It's just, that's not happening. It's probably a dead heat in that race. So, you know, Democrats are, in all available polling data... They're probably going to have a tough time, realistically speaking. Dems are crippled, lol. Yeah. And we all we all saw Fetterman's performance, right? <laughs> Fucking Muppet. Uh, yeah, I think we all actually agree. Actually, real. So, we're going to see, I think, if Democrats lose really badly, Biden is getting kicked. Man, I hope. Yeah, like, uh, at this point, not, not like from the presidency. I don't... I don't... I don't know that any of this is going to happen. There are definitely arguments for and against a lot of this predictionary uh, things from actually taking place. But at this point, I just hope. 
you know? Because, like, seriously, enough of this. Uh, you know, I, I, I think to myself sometimes about, you know, why everybody, you know, was hating on the Trump presidency so much, right? And, you know, why they thought, you know... Like, seriously, how bad could a president really be? Like, really? Because the president doesn't have all that control over your actual, like, in-house lives. So, you know, if you have a president that sucks, you know, eh, whatever. But, you know, you won't get the, you won't get the policies you like. But who cares? You could just, you know, go again next year. Or, no, no, not next year. Next four years, right? But... I don't know, the Biden, the Biden presidency really made me look at myself and think, you know, the president does have power. The president does have power to radically affect and change my life and the lives of others I care about. And, you know, it, it's made me respect the position a little bit more, but it's also made me, I would argue, rightfully, you know, fear and care more about it. You know, if if the if the if the president matters more in my life than I originally thought, then my role in affecting the outcome to make the outcome as good for me as possible is a more important. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, Biden showed me how bad a president can really be in my lifetime. You know, and mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is, if there's anybody like me out there who also has thought that kind of similar process, Biden is screwed. And I would argue so is the Democratic Party, at least for this term. Because... Yeah, man. I mean... It's bad. I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just sick of the taste of Democrat in my mouth. I mean, I mean, I did not say that. You did not have a clip. You do not have evidence. Oh, shit, we're recording? Um, You're going to edit this out of the video. Yeah, totally. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so, uh... uh fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, okay, so, uh, moving on. <laughs> moving uh, on. Yes. By the way, oh, I feel like we should mention this. If you have the chance to vote, go vote. Get out there. But, make your but voice you heard. know, vote, vote, for, vote for Republican. Vote for, vote for our party. Uh, because Look, I'll just say this. Oh, you go for it. Well, no, I was, I was going to say, um, anybody who's telling you uh, to go out there and vote, that's the subtext of what they're saying. Go vote, parentheses, for my guy. Nobody wants their opposition to have more voting power. It's it's stupid. Vote for whoever you want, but don't do it because an influ influencer told you to. You know, us, anyone else, you know, vote if you have an opinion, and if you don't, enjoy the private life while you still have it. Yeah, man, I was just going to say, go out there and vote the elections on November 8th. Uh, make your voice heard. Oh, shit, November Ob 8th? Yeah. Guys! What? That's a pretty funny day. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Anyways. You're a bad friend. You're a bad <laughs> friend. <laughs> Anyways. Why is it a funny day? No, 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 it's fine. We don't need to mention it. No. Um, yeah, come on. Let, let, let's dox you in front of 40 people. Hey, it's on my Twitter account already, okay? So we're, we're okay. <coughs> but anyways, don't vote for a Republican just because your favorite influencer or we are telling you to vote for a Republican. Do your own research. Decide for yourself. No, 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 no. Use we, one of our... We are their favorite influencers. We're sons of liberty, all right? Everybody <laughs> loves us. That's why I leave such nice comments. Use what we're saying as evidence to sway you into voting for a particular party. Or at least a perspective. But, yeah, but do not just take our claims at face value. Go ahead and verify what we're saying. We're, we're fucking idiots. We, we could be yeah. getting any of this wrong. Make sure that you check with, uh, you know, the, the, the correct opinion news before you do anything. And then correct. after you do that, vote, mm. vote for... <laughs> vote, vote for whatever we tell you to, because you are sheep. You are sheep, and I know that anyone watching this will vote exactly as we want you to, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Smile. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about the next and final topic. Oh, the, the ACLU. There's more? There's more? Because we're, we're reaching on the hour 40 mark. Actually... Wow. No, no, no backing out. No backing out. 
Charge head forward. Alright, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. So ACLDU, I'm sure everyone's aware of what you know what this organization is, but if you don't, they're an organization to protect civil liberties. And they're often hated or not hated, but clowned on because they support a lot of weird initiatives. Um, often that are kind of backwards. Uh, from their position where they need to protect civil liberties, but whatever. And in a rare case, a rare W case, the ACLU tweeted out, The First Amendment bars the government from deciding for us what is true or false, online or anywhere. Our government can't use private pressure to get around our constitutional rights. Which is a W, considering what was leaked uh, like a day ago or two days ago. No, 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 no. Yeah, I no. don't <laughs> Okay, no, no. Here's the thing, right? Um, I I was gonna like and retweet this, right? Because this is based, and I want people, more people to know about this shit. But, but, Twitter and their infinite re- wisdom put where the where the retweet button would be. They put, would you like to read the article first? Yeah. And it made me click on that. I got sabotaged. I got sabotaged <laughs> among us. And I'm still retweeting it because I'm mad now. Well, the reason why they said that was because um, in 2020, before the excuse me, before the 2020 election, uh, representatives from tech companies, which include the likes of Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Discord, Wikipedia, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Verizia, uh, excuse me, Verizon, Media, and other different organizations. Met with the FBI, CISA, and other government representatives, according to NBC News, um, to discuss how firms could handle misinformation during the election actually, and actually, other issues. I, I, I want to clarify. Um, uh, the the article says disinformation. And I know that sounds like like splitting hairs, but in modern day uh, leftist, uh, you know, like, like spheres, like, like center lefty neolib stuff, Right, uh, they say disinformation to refer to essentially like actively, intentionally spreading mistruths, whereas misinformation is just a mistake. It's it's being wrong about stuff. Like spreading misinformation is spreading information that's false. Spreading disinformation is actively clouding up the. Of the discourse with information that the poster knows to be wrong, but posts anyway to essentially sabotage the discussion. It's basically saying propaganda, which is, of course, the ultimate height of arrogance and irony. Yeah, so there is that, right? So they were they were meeting these government agencies to discuss, excuse me, discussing disinformation. They were discussing issues ranging from racial justice to um, other social issues and a lot of people have been questioning hey is this the reason why a lot of these influential topics were censored right during the election like the Hunter Biden laptop story and the answer is yes so you know just goes to show that the government is playing a large role in regulating speech more than they should be and it's actually uncomfortable so um yeah, that's that at this point. Rare ACLU base take, IMO. Yeah, I know a bunch of people in the comments are saying you are complicit. <laughs> you are in the side of corporations and censorship, and yeah, you right. know, honestly, yeah, honestly, they're probably right. But the thing yeah. is, you know, broken clocks are right twice a day. You know. <laughs> you know what? That's actually a good analogy. I never even heard that before. How? You know, I've never heard it so. Thank you for informing it's me about something good. Fucking Zoomer baby. All right. Uh, 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 yeah. Thanks for. I think that's it, right? That's pretty Nairo much it. Mention Kanye once this podcast. Oh guys. shit! Right. Oh, we have to. We have to. Uh, hit, we have to hit our Kanye guys, quota. We, we have, have to hit our hit Kanye, Kanye quota. All right, got this, guys. So they were all denied right. by sneakers. All right. <laughs> think about it. All right. They denied Here, by here's the, thing, the right? children light up shoes. All right. I got this. All I got fans. this. I, I I will come in clutch. Right. All right. How are you gonna come in clutch? 
Kanye was right about everything he said, <laughs> particularly oh, in no. relation to Jews. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Thanks for right. watching Sons of that's Liberty. Nice podcast. <laughs> All right. All right. That's Kaika. That's King Chow. Oh, boy. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. 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 I'll support that. Bye. <laughs> you worry about leaving a better planet for our kids. How about leaving better kids for our planet? Entire generation offended at everything. Getting mad that a human thinks all lives matter. We don't need black or white or left or right. What we need is common sense. We need balance. We're all in the same boat. Why are you trying to make holes? If they sink, we sink. This is madness.